Hello everyone, it's Raphael here from XX Raphael Productions and today I'm going to be doing a comparison video on the 2020 MacBook Pro versus the 2015 MacBook Pro. So I know I did a video just a few days ago actually, it is actually shown on the video right now where I compare the ThinkPad to the new ThinkPad and the old ThinkPads. Well, in this video I am going to be doing instead a comparison from this old MacBook Pro which I've had for about 5 years now. If I go ahead and actually get to the um, information about it, you can see this is a 2015 Retina display. And this one, on the other hand, is actually uh, this year's 2020. It's also Retina and they're both running the same version of Mac OS. So in this video, I'm not going to be going into fancy engineering terms, but more like I'll be focusing on the basics of design and also about user functionality and um, some other stuff that they improved here and some stuff that this one did better in. So there I did, um, this may be a long drawn out video because I will be emphasizing a lot based on um, how easy it is to use. And also something about the touch bar, which I will also get into later. And um, so let's go ahead and actually, before we do anything, let's go ahead and actually compare the trackpad first. Because um, if you've noticed, like the first thing you notice is how big this trackpad is compared to this one. Well, both trackpads, are really the same, the same force touch trackpad. If I were to like, let me go ahead and use this. Um, you can zoom in, you know, the typical. And same thing goes for here as well. I've got the same um, configuration, so they all function the same. So in spite of the trackpad size being different, well, um, some people may say that this trackpad is a little too big, but in my opinion, as I was working on it, I've only had it like for a few hours actually. I just got it today, but as I was working on it and setting it up, I actually noticed that this, even though if I move my hand around this trackpad as I type, for example, it, uh, the sensitivity obviously does not, um, it obviously is very, very um, insensitive because I mean, well, I, may, I know I made a point before on my Lenovo ThinkPad trackpad being too sensitive and the trackpad being way too big, but something that Apple gets right when it comes to designing these trackpads are the fact that it is sensitive, um, but at the right time. So if you, despite them making this really huge, it doesn't really have much of a factor, it doesn't really affect. So let's go ahead and actually um, um, compare another thing, which is the logo. So the first thing you'll notice, if you're the owner of a old Mac versus this one, is the logo. So it's uh, one of the things that sticks out instantly, even before I noticed the color was different, I actually realize that if you, let me go ahead and put the brightness down because it is co correlated to the screen brightness. See, you can see that it is off. And if I go ahead and put it back up, the light is back on. So in this one, however, that doesn't happen. So I, I will talk about that later. So depending on your personal preference, I personally think that it doesn't really matter, but I know some people that have um, personally said to me that they prefer this one because of how it lights up in the back. That's one of the um, stuff that MacBook Pros and Airs are both known for. But um, personally, I don't really mind because it's not really a big deal to me. I'm more into does my computer work or not. And this one certainly gets the job done. It's easily much faster than this one. I mean, obviously, if you look at the specs again, let me go back and um, uh, do about this Mac and you will see what I mean. So Clearly, you can see that this is 16 gigabytes of memory. Um, and also this one, I think has about eight, I believe. Let me go ahead and yeah, that's eight gigabytes only. And um, that makes, and this is an SSD. This left one is an SSD as well. So that definitely helps out. And in terms of battery life, this is also very good. So if you're a standard MacBook Pro user, well, obviously the, this one does not fail to, to deliver. The battery life on this thing is good from what I can tell so far. I mean, like I said before, it's only my first day of using it, but the battery life obviously is still very new and it is perfect. So I can take this with like long distances without having to worry about plugging. As long as I have my battery either 90% or above, I am pretty much set for the rest of the day. Also, another thing I like to point out is that this charging port is actually no longer a magnet, unlike the previous Mac, in which a charging port can easily be, be removed like that. So it's a disadvantage when it comes to like being knocked off a table, it could drag the whole computer down along with it. So that's one thing that this old MacBook Pro has in terms of being in an advantage, but that's besides the point. 
that is one let's go ahead and actually talk about this um touch bar because that's actually what i wanted to get into so honestly let's talk about the whole the keyboard as a whole so this is a really really good keyboard you know it feels great as i was typing on it let me go ahead and like um type on this for example um it feels good the keys feel like they're hogging your fingers as you type it kicks the crap out of this here's why two reasons so it's a really sturdy keyboard the way you feel these keys as you type i know that they've had a problem with the keys in the like 2019 and 2018 max and even a 2016 macbooks i remember hearing a lot of complaints about it but evidently they must have fixed it because when i was typing on this one i was also we're doing my work here i was like wow this is really comfortable this one on the other hand i mean don't get me wrong this is a really also a really good keyboard i mean i've had this for five years and have no problems with it but now that I have a direct comparison to both Macs, I am honestly feel that typing on this one is a little bit more, uh, I don't know, I guess it's a little harder, I guess. This one feels softer to type on. So, like I said before, even though this, this keyboard is amazing, I prefer this keyboard, honestly, better. So, let me keep it as, as a disclaimer, okay? I am not hating on this keyboard, but I think this keyboard is an improvement. Now, despite the fact that these keys feel better as you type, uh, they, they changed the layout and fucking destroyed it. Let me show you what I mean. So, to people who are um programming or doing any um things that require function keys a lot, you might notice how, if you see this touch bar, you might notice there is no function keys. Now, you have to simply hold down the function key to make them show, like what I'm doing right here. Now, I know, I know, you can go ahead to go to um system preferences. Let me um go ahead and show you right now. System preferences... Um, the keyboard, and then you can choose what you want your touch bar to show. I'm not saying that I don't know how to do that, but unfortunately, the problem with this is that if there are times where you have to like multitask, that becomes really, really tiresome. So don't get me wrong. The touch bar is a great idea. Now, if you're a casual user, like let's say you're not doing programming or anything, you're just browsing the internet or you're making videos, for example, this is very good for you. So no problem with that. The touch bar is great. Let me go ahead and show an example. Uh, let me go ahead and put the volume. Uh, let me go ahead and... Yeah, see, you can adjust the volume. And also, another thing you'll notice is if you go ahead and open up another application. Let's open GarageBand, for example. I want you to pay attention to how the touch bar changes. So, see that? So, it adapts to whatever application you open. It automatically adapts. Now, that is really very cool. So... That is what makes this touch bar good, but the only problem is that they had an opportunity to have this keyboard with the function keys, the regular function keys, and then put the touch bar on the very top. I don't know why Apple decided to take away that option and decide to fuse them into one, but that is not a good idea because let's go ahead and open up in this um MacBook here. Now, as I said before in my Lenovo video, I, I know I'm showing this video quite a lot. Oops. I'm showing this video quite a lot, but I will get into this later when I compare the sound of both. So before we get into that, let's go ahead and show you what I'm doing. So as I said before, I am a computer science student in my other video, and let's go ahead and show what I will use function keys for. So I know the average user doesn't use function keys, but I do. So what I really wish Apple decided to leave is my ability to use function keys and the touch bar at the same time rather than having to hold down a key just to, you know, if I have to use two hands, that makes it even more inconvenient. Like, if I'm going to F11, for example, like this one here says I have to use F11 to debug my code. So I'm going to have to hold this and, yeah, good luck. Good luck reaching that with one hand. You cannot. Okay, so you have to use two hands and that kind of interrupts your workflow. All right, so um, there are other um, shortcuts here. You have like, um, well, mostly F11 actually when it comes to using Eclipse. But um, so other than that, the touch bar is good if you're doing casual work, but this is the MacBook Pro. I mean, honestly, I think this would work better on the MacBook Air because the MacBook Air is not actually um, used for heavy work. Well, you can use it for heavy work, but it's not as recommended because it's not as powerful. But I think the pros should have the option to use function keys, but also have the touch bar not to replace it, but also to accompany it. That is a better way that Apple could have done that. Now, let's go ahead and actually compare the audio tracks. So 
listening to the speaker so far this mac speakers the new one is really good let's go ahead and play my video that i uploaded september 26. hello youtube this is rafael here from xx rafael productions and today i'm going to be doing a comparison video with this old lenovo thinkpad versus the new yeah so that's the um video i was gonna play now let's go ahead and move to this one um let me go ahead and play it again you see, my Wi-Fi is going to... Yeah, let me refresh the page first. Okay, so if you notice, let's go ahead and... Yeah, do you hear that kind of issue right there? Can you hear that um crackling sound as I am playing the video? So that is a big part of why this MacBook Pro speaker is a major improvement over this one. So in terms of sound quality and also speed, actually, like, like that's what I'm saying. Like if I, if I um, use this laptop, it not only is it um like it's actually thick, oh uh, thinner because if I go ahead and close it, you see how you can compare the hinges and also if you compare the thickness of it compared to this one, this is actually uh, thinner and much easier to carry around. So, um, the when it comes to the actual keyboards, though. Um, this is this is better to type on, but I just wish they did. Um, even though I hate the fact that they replace the function keys, I know that Apple loves to innovate. So that is one thing I'll give Apple credit on. They know how to innovate, and sometimes it may be for the worse. They may fail, but they take risks. But one thing that I can't understand is why function keys are being replaced, which has really no reason to. And um, I'm not even gonna go ahead and mention the ports because honestly that was just a massive fucking fail really but um I don't know why in God's name would you take away my ability to plug in a USB like I mean I use this quite a lot like Apple is kind of too far into the future basically like that's one thing I'll talk about Apple so they are very bold when it comes to innovating and they sometimes they go they act as if we are already far into the future and act as if previews stuff have been obsolete but Ports are still very much used, especially as a computer science student, which many of us use Macs as well when it comes to running like Xcode, for example. Like, see this right here, which my cursor is circling on? I'm using Xcode, which only runs on Mac OS. It doesn't run on Windows. So what Apple's m mistake is that they are kind of like um, hand handicapping us so that when we're trying to like, you know, like you use these for work or if you're trying to transport projects, for example, this is inconvenient because we have to use either email or we have to buy an external cable to actually plug it in. And that sucks. So, like, that's really my only two problems with this laptop is the touch bar and the ports. But other than that, this is very quick to use. Now, again, my memory is like 16 gigabytes. So that makes it as well easier and not, not easier, more faster as well. And also can manage plenty of applications as I'm using them because... When I, this one, on the other hand, one time, this actually turned off and restarted because I had to, um, I had to restart because I had too much apps open and it basically threw me an error. So that's one thing that this one has an advantage on. Now, that depends, again, what the, what kind of memory or what kind of much disk space did you buy when you first bought this laptop. So when it comes to the display, both are very good display, both Retina, so the quality of the display should be the same. Now, another thing I'd like to get into as well is the um, actual Touch ID. So here, if you are an owner of this and you want to know how it works, well, this can be used as well for installing applications. Let's say you're gonna like install a new package or if you're trying to log in or trying to gain access to anything, it actually asks you for the for your Touch ID, you, know, you move like your fingerprint or you can enter your password. So that's a cool way also to be able to make sure that you can efficiently do your work without having to type it all the time. So I guess that's a, a good advantage of this as well. I personally like the Touch ID, so that I have no complaints of that. And the Touch Bar is really good. I just wish they didn't replace the function keys, really. And now let's go look about the... Um, I've mostly talked about the, um, the software, so let's go ahead and actually... I mean, I'm doing some work on this laptop, so I'm not going to close it, but let's go ahead and bend it like this. So... First impressions, well, let's pretend that we have it like here. So this kind of um, uh, laptop is, looks a little smaller and thinner, of course. So it makes it more efficient to carry around. Definitely more powerful, has a better sound. 
and the color is actually a little darker. But I mean, one thing I have I noticed even before, like my first impression was the fact that the logo is not glowing. Now, like I said before, that if you're a classic MacBook Pro user, um, obviously you will realize that's like the eye catching part, really. So even for me, I noticed that before I noticed the color being different. So the fact that the rest of the color is different, but the logo is ca the logo was the one that caught my eye first. That's just a testament to how much I've used a Mac for years. So, um, either way though, aside from that, you can, it's up to your personal preference, really. I think both look beautiful, really, but, um, I think that, um, I, it's cool to keep the glowing function, but I understand why it's not really that important to me. Cause like I said before, I don't have my laptops just for beautiful purposes. It's meant for me to work. So, if this is the more efficient one, then I will take this one. If this is the more efficient one, then I will take this one. So you get the logic I'm trying to convey here. So let's go ahead and put that back up. Okay, so... So, in conclusion now, do I like this new Mac? Absolutely. It's a great MacBook Pro um, 2020 version. Again, Retina display. Very, very fast. I think if you're a casual user, this is beyond, this is really overkill if you're a casual user. So I want to talk about, again, the differences between the casual users and the people who use this for like hard or heavy work. So since I've been comparing the user functionality a lot, let's go ahead and actually talk about the demographics of people who use these two computers. So people who usually use Macs, well, I know that there's a lot of people who use them, but um. Let's go ahead and talk about the casual users first. Well, they won't, they will most likely not be using the function keys a lot. Well, unless you're doing gaming with this computer, you probably will not be using the function keys a lot. You will just be sending text, writing, using the trackpad or browsing the internet. This is beyond perfect. So I have literally zero problems when it comes to that. Now, when it comes to the um, demographics of people who use this computer, pretty much the same. So both casual users, because at least for this one, you have the physical buttons you can use to edit, not edit, more like change the volume. And this one, you have to use the touch bar to do so. So for casual users, either way, these two are pretty much the same, I'd say. Now, when it comes to the people who are programming, though, I would say that this has a bit of an edge over this one. Despite the fact that this, however, has more memory. So it's kind of like a double edged sword because this one is actually more efficient to handle heavy usage because of the amount of um, memory and disk space this is. So it's meant to handle a lot more um, tasks, I guess you could say. But unfortunately, the function keys are fucking destroyed. So um, I didn't, I mean, then again, you can go ahead and again, as I said before, customize this by going to keyboard and then doing whatever you want to put in here. So you can, that's why you can change it. But like I said before, I just prefer the fact that I could do this, like like I said before, the perfect Mac would have been the touch bar and the function keys directly underneath. That would have been the perfect laptop. But other than that, it's not really too much of a problem. I mean, you can do function anyway and still activate the function keys to show. So either way, really, it's just a little minor setback, but I would recommend this laptop to get over this one. Now, obviously, if you're if you're on a really strict budget, then you can keep this laptop. It is still very good even in 2020. This is the 2015 MacBook Pro 13 inch retina display and it is still very useful. I've had absolutely no problem with it other than what I said before when um it crashed one time due to too much applications. But if you have the money, I would suggest you to upgrade to this. And let's talk about durability because I have seen people complain that Oh, Apple's durability is so is so bad. It breaks too easily. And honestly, what the hell did you do to your computers that caused it to break? Because I mean, I this okay. I told you before. This is a new laptop, so I haven't even had any time to use it for a full day. But I've dropped this before. This um has fallen off my bed plenty of times. Like I'm working and I fall asleep and my arm knocks it over, for example. And it has survived pretty much every fall it has taken. So. What the hell did you do that caused it to break? Like, I mean, I actually spilled milk on this trackpad once and it had a problem for a few days, but it actually fixed itself. So um, when it comes to durability, I think people are overplaying that it's too weak or, or whatever, too easily broken. I doubt that tremendously. Now, 
Well, if you comment down below and tell me what you were doing that caused it to break, then I can probably understand. But from what, what I know as I'm making this video, th these two Macs I'm sure are quite durable. Now, this one is quite, um, this one should be a little, should be pretty much the same as this, but time will tell, I guess. Like I said before, it's only less than a day since I got this laptop, so let's go ahead and, um, thank you very much for watching. So, I hope I was able to tell you the differences between this and this laptop and maybe convince you to get the newest MacBook Pro, which is definitely one of the best laptops I have used. And um, if you like the video, leave a like and comment down below what you think. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.